Hello, my name is Cheng Wook Shim, and the main subject I teach is mathematics, primarily AP Calculus BC. I'm also very competent at teaching AP Statistics and AP Physics C, both mechanics and electricity and magnetism. Other than those three primary topics, which I'm the strongest at, I'm also capable of teaching AP Economics, both microeconomics and macroeconomics. I've been teaching at my high school's math and science tutoring center for three years, and I've been teaching mathematics outside of school, uh, not just limited to calculus, but I've been teaching a lot of different subject areas in math. So I would say I'm very experienced when it comes to teaching students in mathematics. So today I'm going to introduce trigonomic substitution, which is an important skill in calculus that can help you solve integrals that would otherwise be impossible to solve. For example, let's look at the following integral. Now, if you see this integral, if you just use u substitution or some other technique that you learned earlier, you might try to use something like u equals 9 minus x squared, but this is actually, it makes another integral that's really difficult to solve, pretty much impossible to solve. So instead of using u substitution, we can use a different kind of substitution. If you look at the square root of 9 minus x squared, it looks a little bit like, the, like a, the distance formula. So we can kind of deduce that we might be able to draw a triangle with side lengths that will help us solve this. And this is what the triangle would look like. Now, if you look at this triangle, you can see that the side lengths here all follow the Pythagorean theorem. And we have this section here, this side length, the square root of 9 minus x squared, we have it as one of the lengths of the legs. And now if we express sine theta and cosine theta in terms of x, we can get some pretty interesting uh, expressions that will help us solve the integral. So we get these two expressions by using the definitions of sine and cosine. And then using these, we can substitute, we can figure out what dx is in terms of theta and what the square root of 9 minus x squared is in terms of theta. And then we'll get the following expressions. So with, the, you can, with these two expressions that are underlined, we can just substitute them directly into this integral up here to get a much easier integral. And the easier integral is going to look something like well, something like this, where we have sines and cosines instead of difficult um, square roots. So we will get the following integral expression on the right side. And the integral on the right side is a lot easier to solve. First of all, we can simply cancel out. We can simply cancel out the three sine theta thetas on both sides. So we get this. And then if we just simplify it, we will get Uh, we'll get the following integral. And the following integral, if we just uh, go back to what we saw before, remember this expression. So we can use this expression to solve for um, the final, we can use that expression to solve for the final uh, integral that we want to find. And it's going to look like this. And don't forget the plus C. 
So we'll get an answer that looks something like this. Because remember, we knew that, uh, oh shoot, sorry, uh, not sine is going to be equals negative cosine arc cosine plus c. Because here we found that cosine theta equals x over 3. So we know theta equals inverse cosine of x over 3. And additionally, don't forget the plus c because it's an integral, an indefinite integral. Uh, a def yeah, an indefinite integral. And now I'm going to move on to a ever so slightly more difficult problem that can also be solved with trig substitution. And the problem looks something like this. Now, if we, again, uh, draw a triangle, then we'll get a triangle that looks something like this. A triangle that looks like this. And with this triangle, we can follow a similar procedure as before, finding out sine theta, which would equal the square root of 4 minus x squared over 2, and cosine theta as x over 2. And then we can solve the expressions. So we'll get the expressions that we need underlined there. So then if we substitute the integral, then we'll get an integral that looks like We'll get the uh, following integral. Because if you look back here, you can see that the x squared is simply going to, we have the x squared here, and that's simply going to become 2 times cosine theta squared, which we can see here, 2 times cosine theta squared. And then if we go back here, we know 4 minus, the square root of 4 minus x squared is just equal to sine theta. And dx is equal to um, negative 2 sine theta um, times d theta. So then we can get the following expression. And now if we um, simplify this, we'll get so we'll get the following expression. Now, this may look somewhat complicated to solve, but it's really not complicated. If you remember the double angle formula, we have sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta, the double angle formula. And then if we substitute the double angle formula into the previous expression, then we will get Because since the above here, it's cosine squared times sine squared, we have to square what we have here. And then we'll get the following expression. And now we just have to use the double angle formula again to get rid of the square up here. And then we can solve the integral. And I'll leave that as an exercise because it's rather simple algebra. So that's basically how trig substitution works and how it can be used to solve difficult integrals. Thank you so much for watching this video profile. And if you're looking for a tutor who is very competent at mathematics and who can really teach uh, difficult subjects such as AP Calculus BC, then I'm definitely one of the tutors you should consider.